Um, I wanted to actually talk about a particular idea which illustrates some of the method, some of the mechanisms that I think are important. Um, this motivates the idea and it actually connects up with Angela's opening comments about laptops and conferences and classrooms. Imagine that you walked into this classroom and you're ready to give a lecture. You are devastated by your challenge. How are you possibly going to get this group to focus on learning something relative to the alternatives of focusing on the millions of distracting opportunities on their laptops? Now, when we think about laptops in our classrooms, I'm going to talk about a very particular intervention. Um, we are torn because for many students, laptops are perfectly legitimate technologies that make them more productive uh, and that should be allowed in the classroom. So it's a technology for learning. A lot of our students take notes on laptops and it's completely legit. Um, it's a technology for non-class activities as well. And even though we maybe don't like that, for our students, that is a real benefit to them to be connected maybe to other people. So I don't want to dismiss those social benefits. Of course, there's a huge negative externality for other students in the class. You're sitting there and the person next to you is clattering away and you're distracted by the sound and you're occasionally looking at their screen and then it makes you want to look at Facebook too. So there's all sorts of problems like that. Um, we know that students, or we think that students overestimate their ability to parallel process. There's lots of work on that. We think we can do two things simultaneously and then all of a sudden in the conference call, someone says, David, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our students have the same problem. Um, the web offers instant gratification that undermines our very good intentions to get the most out of class, and I think that's all about present bias. We go into the classroom and we are convinced, I am going to be a good student, I'm convinced I'm going to be a good participant on this conference call, um, and uh, suddenly other things become very appealing and very tempting, and we're distracted by those other very um, uh, gratifying opportunities and suddenly we've lost 45 minutes of the 50 minute lecture. Um, and then there's a last consideration which is students resent hard paternalism. So one thing that we need to think about as we go down this path of behavior change is not just students resenting hard paternalism but our society questioning all of us and our efforts to kind of nudge them or force them into different behaviors. All considerations. So what are the solutions? in this very important domain. I mean, we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars in colleges and I think we're not getting much value for our money. We could have a laissez-faire policy. Students are adults when they reach college age. Let them decide. We could have an educational intervention. We could explain, you know, all of these issues. I'm guessing it wouldn't do much to change laptop use, um, but we might try it. We could ban laptops and maybe have exceptions for people who have some medical reason why it should be allowed. Um, I've thought about all these. I don't really love any of these options. Um, so let me offer a different alternative, one that we could actually, as a group, test or think about testing. Um, in my class with Tomasz Strzelecki at Harvard, we have an opt-in laptop policy. So here's how it works. I'm kind of omitting some of the details to keep it short. Electronic devices may not be used in class unless you opt into a laptop seating section of the classroom in which laptops and other electronic devices may be used. If you are interested in sitting in this laptop section, please send me an email by midnight on Feb 1. So what are we doing? We are enabling them, if they have good reasons, in a cool state, in a deliberative state, at a distance from the actual use of a laptop, to say what they think is in their best interest. We're not letting them in the moment be tempted by the laptop. We are asking them to think about it in advance. We're using a default here to nudge them away from laptop use, but if they really legitimately want to use it, we're all in. So let me tell you about um, what we see in our course as we went from not doing this to doing this. So it's one kind of bad data point. It's a time series for a single course. So before we had this policy, if you looked out at the classroom at a point in time, I would say about half of our students in a class of 80 or 85 students were looking at their personal device rather than looking at us. Now, of course, some of them were looking at their personal device for good reasons, but as Angela said, <laughs> a lot of them were streaming videos. Because um, I often would occasionally kind of walk 
through the room, uh, knowing fully what I was doing. They didn't realize what I did. Then I would be walking back, looking at the laptops. And it was amazing what was on those screens. Um, I would say of the half that were looking at their screens, maybe only a quarter of this half were actually doing material that I would consider to be course relevant. Um, so then we introduced this laptop policy, the policy you saw on the previous slide. They can opt into it once and for all at the start of the lecture, at the start of the semester, rather. Um, and what we got was 20% in our class of 80 opt into the laptop section. And in the laptop section, if I look at them in a point in time, about 75% of those in the laptop section are actually using their laptop. Even in the laptop section, a quarter are looking at us. Um, which means that the laptop usage rate is 15% as a consequence of this completely um, you know, non-coercive policy. They are allowed to use their laptops. They just have to use them intentionally and not impulsively. So we took laptop usage from 50% down to 15% with this policy. And I think a lot of behavior change that works is exactly along these lines. It's asking people to be thoughtful in an ex-ante way and to, and to commit to what they view is in their best interest and to not allow momentary urges, present bias, and other forces that are operating at high frequency to divert their kind of long-run interests. Now, what I want to propose, and then we did an anonymous end of semester survey, lots of questions. I'll just show you one. Consider the course laptop policy from the past semester. Please rate the laptop policy on a 0 to 10 scale, with 0 being bad and 10 being good. Um, and then they're seeing this language. The laptop policy was bad or good for my ability to learn in this course. They had a sliding scale, average rating 8.1 out of 10. Now, it's not to say they're all happy about the policy. A small number of them hate me, because they ended up picking the no laptop section and regretting it. But there's even a small group that picks the laptop section and hate me. Um, and I think they hate me. They don't say they want to switch out. They hate me because I've called them out. Because now they're in this tiny little group on the side of the class. They have the same access to the front of the classroom. But they're no longer mixed in with everyone else. Now you know, they are clearly the people. It's like the um, outside. Yeah, exactly, right. So I think you know, there's some people who don't like it. So we have to ask ourselves. We're not helping everyone, but we're helping the vast majority of our students, at least in this one setting. So proposal for um, the uh, uh, Angela and Katie um, research program, maybe we could do something jointly on this. Um, something like this, a randomized control trial, randomized at the course year level. Um, so everyone who wants to would join this study. Half of the courses use the opt-in laptop policy in year one, the same policy we saw two minutes ago, or was it six minutes ago, um, uh, and then use a laissez-faire policy in year two. The other half of the faculty in the study um, have their course use the laissez-faire policy in year one and the opt-in laptop <coughs> policy in year two. And of course, whether you go one, two, or two, one, it's randomized. Uh, and then we analyze laptop usage. We analyze metrics of course success in terms of learning metrics. Um, and of course, everyone would be a co-author in this study. Thanks very much. <laughs>